Now, one of the advantages of having this segregated or separated architecture is that multiple GNS3 clients can interact with the controller. So multiple clients can control a GNS3 instance. In the documentation for version 2.0 of GNS3, new features are listed. And one of them is that multiple users can be connected to the same project. So multiple users can connect to the same project and see changes in real time and collaborate on a GNS3 network. What's also very cool is that when you open the console to a router, you'll see the commands sent by other users. So we have a segregation or separation of the graphical user interface with the server component. I'll demonstrate those kind of features in separate videos. Now, what is an emulator? We've got QMU, IOU, and Dynamips. Dynamips is probably the most well-known because it's been around the longest. What I'll do here is add some routers to the topology. This router, router one, is using a C37 instance, and router two is using a C37 VM instance. Now in my GNS3 project, what you'll notice is I'm running multiple servers. I'm running a local server, as well as a GNS3 VM. Dynamips is an emulator. In other words, it allows you to mimic hardware in the same way that VMware allows you to run a Windows server on a Mac or Linux on Windows. A VMware is a hypervisor that emulates a Windows PC. So this Windows installation, which I'll boot up in a moment, believes that it's running on Windows hardware. Whereas in actual fact, it's running in an emulated or virtual environment. In the same way, my Cisco iOS image, this is a real Cisco iOS image, is running on a Dynamips emulation. In this case, it's running locally using a local install of Dynamips on my Mac. Whereas this router, the C3725-VM, is running on the GNS3 VM. So in this example, I'm running the GNS3 VM within VMware Fusion. So I've got my hardware device, which is a Mac. I've got VMware Fusion installed on my Mac operating system, and I'm running the GNS3 VM, which is running a version of Linux on my Mac. But inside the GNS3 VM, Dynamips is emulating a router hardware platform. This is called nested virtualization. In other words, you are nesting one virtualization technology within another. I'll start up these devices actually, so we can see what happens. Notice in this example that my Windows PC boots up because it's part of the GNS3 topology. So my Windows 10 operating system is running in a virtual environment on my Mac. In other words, it's virtualized using virtualization technology, in this case, VMware Fusion. In the same way, I'm running Linux within VMware Fusion on my Mac, and inside the GNS3 VM, I'm running multiple emulators. So the controller process and the compute server processes are running in this example on the same virtual machine, and they are launching various emulators. In my example, I've got QMU, which allows me to run emulated hardware to support Cisco iOS V, as well as Cisco iOS V layer two devices. I've got Dynamips running within the GNS3 VM, which allows me to emulate a Cisco router running a real Cisco iOS. So notice here, I've got a local process and I've got a GNS3 VM process, but my GNS3 VM is running multiple processes internally and multiple emulators to allow me to support different devices. Now, once again, this is very similar to me running VMware Workstation within VMware Fusion. So in this example, once again, I'm running a Mac with Mac OS Sierra. So that's my operating system running on physical hardware. I've got a VMware Fusion 
which provides a virtualization technology. I'm running Windows 10 within VMware Fusion. And what I could do here is start up a VM within VMware Workstation running within Fusion. That is called nested virtualization. Now it's not necessarily always a good idea to do this because you can slow things down. But what I could do is run GNS3 within my Windows PC, which contacts the GNS3 VM running on VMware Workstation within Windows within VMware Fusion. And within this GNS3 VM, I could run an emulation software, Dynamips, that allows me to run real Cisco IOS routers in my network topology. Now I'm not recommending that you do that. I'm simply showing you that you can run nested virtualization within nested virtualization. So here I've got Cisco IOS images running within Dynamips, running within VMware Workstation, running within VMware Fusion. So let's close that down because we don't actually need that. Back on my Mac, you can see that I'm running Dynamips as a process on my Mac directly. That supports this router once again, which is running on a local install of Dynamips. But this router is running on Dynamips, which is running on the GNS3 VM within VMware Fusion. So to summarize, we have a GNS3 GUI. That is the interface that we interact with. In the future, we may have a web-based interface to the controller. The controller can connect to multiple computer servers or they could all run within the same GNS3 VM. These kickstart various emulators such as QMU, which is the emulator used for iOS V layer two and various other appliances that you can get from the GNS3 marketplace. We have the IOU emulator and the Dynamips emulator. So which is the best? The best today is to run QMU. I hope you enjoyed the video. If it was of benefit to you, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.